What's up, everybody? Most NBA fans are probably hyped for the playoffs, but if you're a fan of a lottery team, you're praying for some serious luck during lottery day and hoping your team drafts a stud. We won't find out where the lottery picks land until June 22nd, but in this video, we'll do our best to project who each lottery team will select based on the current standings. But before we continue, please like the video and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a banger. Now let's get started. With the number one pick, the Rockets select Cade Cunningham. This should come as a shocker to no one as Cade Cunningham is easily the can't miss prospect of this draft. He's a generational talent that could be one of the top five players in the NBA in just a few seasons. He's a huge point guard at six foot seven with incredible ball handling, passing and shooting skills. And he's not only a great offensive player, but he's a stud on a defensive end as well. Whoever lucks into the number one pick will be landing a game changing player for the Rockets. A young core that includes both Cunningham and Christian Wood makes their future incredibly bright just one season after trading James Harden. With the second pick, the Pistons will select Jalen Green. Green opted out of college basketball to play for the G League Ignite, where he showcased his elite talent. Green has one of the highest upsides in this draft. He's a next level athlete, able to regularly beat defenders off the dribble and put help defenders on a poster when they meet him at the rim. And he isn't just a slasher because he can burn defenders from outside if they give him too much space. Green shot 37% from three for the G League Ignite this season. The Pistons sped up their rebuild by signing Jeremy Grant last year as he had an all-star caliber season. Drafting Green could be what they need to become a winning team again. The future in Detroit now looks extremely bright. With the number three pick, the Orlando Magic select Jalen Suggs. The Magic have a bit of a tough choice here because they have to choose between two great prospects between Evan Mobley and Jalen Suggs. Mobley has skills at seven feet tall that are extremely rare. He could easily be a franchise player, but the Magic just traded for Wendell Carter Jr., who played really well for them in the second half of the year and also plays the center position. Instead, the Magic are going to take Suggs, who not only is a stud, but also fits much better with their current young core. Suggs is a very athletic point guard that can beat defenders off the dribble really well and finish at the rim. He's also a good shooter, defender, and playmaker at the point guard position. Suggs could be the all-star guard that helps the Magic get back to playing winning basketball. With the number four pick, the Orlando Magic select Evan Mobley. Mobley is one of the most talented big men to come out of the draft in a while. He's an athletic seven footer with legit shooting, passing and ball handling skills. And on the defensive end, he's a force where he uses his long seven foot four wingspan to block shots at the rim and crash the boards. With these skills and physical tools at just 19 years old, the sky is truly the limit for Evan Mobley. By adding Mobley to a young core that includes Shea Gilgus Alexander and Lou Dort with a treasure chest of future first round picks, OKC's rebuild is in excellent shape. With the fifth pick, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Jonathan Kaminga. With Kaminga, the Cavs are landing a prospect with a very high upside. He's got good size for the small forward position at 6'8 with a 6'11 wig spin, and he's extremely athletic. He's able to blow by defenders with ease and finish over rim protectors really well thanks to his hops and good touch around the rim. He's also a defensive stud able to guard multiple positions on the court thanks to his size, length, and agility. While Kaminga is undoubtedly very good, he still needs to improve his outside shooting and clean up his turnovers, but he has the potential to be a fantastic two-way player. The Cavaliers are landing an excellent player to add to their young core. With the sixth pick, the Warriors are going to select James Booknight. The Timberwolves originally owned this pick, but the Warriors have it thanks to the Andrew Wiggins trade. The Warriors are a team that will more than likely use their pick to select a player ready to contribute now since they hope to become contenders again ASAP. Book Knight is an athletic 6'5 shooting guard who should be a good scorer day one in the NBA. Thanks to his quick first step and slick handle, he could get to the basket very easily and he's a strong finisher when he gets there. He's also got one of the best pull-up jumpers in the draft. 
able to use moves like the crossover and step back to get a shot off at any time. The Warriors need more good offensive players outside of Steph Curry, so this is a strong pick for them at number six. With the seventh pick, the Raptors select Keon Johnson. Keon Johnson is a very talented player that is raw in some areas of his game, but he has a pretty high upside if he can clean up his weaknesses. He's a next level athlete that can do powerful dunks even when attacking in traffic. He also uses that athleticism on a defensive end where he's a great on-ball defender when locked in. And if you do get by him, he can recover and get the block. He still really needs to develop his shooting as he only shot 27% for three for Tennessee this year, but if he does become a good shooter, it'll take his game to another level. The Raptors have one of the best development staffs in the league, so they could probably help him to reach his potential quickly. With the eighth pick, the Orlando Magic select Jalen Johnson. Johnson is a 6'9 small forward out of Duke that does a lot of things on the court at a high level. He's very athletic, and he often uses that athleticism to get out on the fast break, either to get all the way to the rim or set up his teammates. He's very unselfish and good at making the right reads to find his wide open teammates. And on the defensive end, thanks to his size and length, he can guard multiple positions on the court. Johnson still needs to work on his shooting and ball handling skills, but he has a lot of potential to be a great two-way player. For the Magic, Johnson is a nice prospect to add to their rebuild. With the ninth pick, the Kings select Scotty Barnes. Barnes is an athletic 6'9 small forward with a 7'2 wingspan who thrives on both ends of the court. On defense, he could guard multiple positions thanks to his size and athleticism, and on offense, he's great at scoring at the basket. He's also unselfish and a very good passer. Barnes needs to improve his outside shot and shot making ability, but the potential to be a great two-way player is clearly there. The Kings were last in the league in defensive efficiency, so Barnes would be a great fit to their young core. With the 10th pick, the Pelicans select Corey Kispert. The Pelicans are a very talented team between Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram, but it was clear all year long that they need more shooting between those two. The Pelicans ranked just 25th in three-point attempts a game. This is what makes Kispert such a great pick as he's a knockdown outside shooter. He isn't one-dimensional either as he could also put the ball on the floor and score at the basket if you run him off the three-point line. He reminds me a lot of Joe Harris of the Brooklyn Nets. This is a very good pick for the Pelicans at number 10. With the 11th pick, the Hornets select Kai Jones. The Hornets are a very talented team and were likely a Gordon Hayward injury away from making the playoffs this season. With Cody Zeller and Bismack Biyombo being impending free agents, it would definitely make sense to draft the big. Kai Jones is a very athletic center with good size at 6'10 with a 7'1 wingspan. On the offensive end, he does what you need a modern center to do in terms of rim running, screen setting, and lob catching. And on the defensive end, he's very good at using his size and length to protect the rim. He still needs to put on weight as he is a bit slim, but he has the potential to be the Hornets' center of the future. With the 12th pick, the Spurs select Franz Wagner. Wagner has good size at the small forward position at 6'9", and he does a lot of things on the court pretty well. He's a solid shooter, a solid passer, and while his defense isn't great, he's good at staying in front of his man and recovering if he gets beat. He doesn't have a particularly high upside, but he's someone that can immediately be plugged into an NBA rotation and contribute to wins. For a team like the Spurs that was close to making the playoffs last year, this is a good selection for them. With the 13th pick, the Pacers select Josh Giddy. Giddy is an 18-year-old point guard out of Australia with a very high upside. He's got tremendous height for the point guard position at six foot eight, and with his height and great court vision, he's an excellent playmaker. Giddy is also a good ball handler and can beat defenders off the dribble and score at the rim. He needs to put on weight as he's pretty skinny and he needs to improve his shooting, but the potential to be an all-star point guard is clearly there. And finally, with the 14th pick, the Warriors select Moses Moody. Moody is a six foot six shooting guard out of Arkansas that is ready to contribute to an NBA team on both ends of the floor. He's an excellent three-point shooter, and he can shoot it pretty well both off the dribble and off the catch. Moody is also a terrific on-ball defender thanks to his high motor and good size and length for the position. For the Warriors, he could excel as a spark plug off the bench. But anyway, guys, 
that's going to be the end of the video. What did you think of my selections? And who do you want your team to pick in the draft? Tell me in the comments. With the draft lottery fast approaching, I'm definitely going to be doing plenty more mock drafts. So make sure to like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it and want to see more of these. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.